Okay, with glancing collisions, we're no longer looking at an object where we have uh, two objects, uh, you know, maybe heading towards each other and they're they're directly hitting each other, center of mass, center of mass, uh, and bouncing off. So if that was a condition before collision, um, you know, we might have, you know, after collision, uh, this one moving off in that direction and this one stopping. Let's say. So we don't have that condition anymore. Now we're going to look at what happens when two objects, say, uh, before collision, uh, let's say one object is sitting here and moving to the right, and then we have an object down here that's moving to the north. Now, this is before collision. And then after collision, uh, we might have uh, this one moving off uh, let's say this is A, and A might move that. If we, or maybe even they stick together. If they stick together, they might both move off in that direction there like that. So how do we analyze those? Well, just like we did before, uh, the sum of the momentums initially must equal the sum of the momentums uh, after collision, except now we're going to look at it in two, uh, each direction independently. So we'll sum the momentums in the x, uh, and sum the momentums in the y, and the sum of those um, before and after should equal, and then we can combine using components and vectors like they did before, remembering that momentum is, is a vector quantity. So let's just jump in uh, to an example problem and see if, if we can uh, apply that. So here we have a 1,200 kilogram car, let's say M1, uh, is 1,200 kilograms, and it's traveling at 60 uh, kilometers per hour uh, east, and a M2 of 3,000 kilograms, and we can underline that, three, and it's east at that, and then we have 3,000 kilogram truck moving north at 40 kilometers per hour, so V initial V2 initial is 40 kilometers per hour going north. Uh, they collide at a perpendicular intersection and assuming the vehicles become entangled, so they're now together in a completely inelastic collision, what is the final velocity of the two? So we're looking for V final. So what we have, if we do a sketch, we have before, and I'll do a little after over here. So before collision, we've got A going this way and B going this way. So this is uh, 60, and this is a mass of 1,200 kilograms. And over here, we have a 3,000 kilogram uh, moving at 40. And after, we have both masses together. Uh, and I'm going to predict that they're going to move off in some velocity like this, where this mass now is 12, uh, 1,200 plus the 3,000. Okay, so those are the conditions before and after. So we're going to take and analyze these by looking at summing the momentum in the x direction initially must equal the sum of the momentum uh, in the x direction afterwards. So in the x direction, take one mass at a time, we've got, uh, okay, so we have uh, a 1,200 kilogram mass moving at 60 meters per second uh, east, so that's positive, plus the 3,000 kilogram mass not moving, so that's speed of zero in the x direction, must be then equal to the 1,200 plus the 3,000, because now they're entangled and moving together, so the masses are together, moving in a vx direction. So we can solve that. Then uh, 60 times the 1,200 gives us the 72,000 um, is equal to 4,200 v. And then solving for the vx, we have the x then equaling uh, 17.1 meters per second. And that's in the x direction. And because it came out positive, uh, it is going in the easterly direction. Uh, if we come over here now, 
and we can do the same thing and sum the momentums in the y. So sum of the momentum in the y direction initially must equal the sum of the momentums in the y direction finally. So we have the 1200 kilogram only moving eastward, so that's velocity in the y is zero, plus the 3000 kilograms. Now that is moving at 40 meters per second. Must equal the sum of the masses um, again, I'll we'll put them together, 1,200 plus, I'll write it out, 1,200 plus the 3,000 times uh, velocity y. So here that goes to zero, uh, and we end up with 120,000 is equal to 4,200 vy. So the velocity in the y final uh, comes out to uh, 28 0.6 meters per second. So we now have the velocity in the y, we have the velocity in the x. We can now use Pythagorean theorem. So the resultant velocity of those two is uh, vx squared plus vy squared square root, uh, which comes out to 17.1 squared plus 28.6 squared square root, which is 33.3 uh, meters per second. Uh, we just need a direction now, and we can find the direction as the inverse tangent of y over x. And here's the velocity of y over the velocity of x. So we have tan uh, inverse of 28.6 divided by the 17.1. And if we do that, we make sure your calculator is in the degree mode. Uh, I get that to be 59 degrees, and it's positive, so that's going to be in a northeasterly direction. So there is our, our final answer, 33 meters per second at 59 degrees northeast. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Uh, here we have a 10 kilogram cannonball in flight moving at 50 meters per second along the x direction. It explodes into three pieces. Uh, a 2.5 kilogram piece goes off at 30 degrees. 60 meters uh, at, at 60 meters per second. And then a 44.5 kilogram piece goes off at a 45 degree angle uh, at 75 meters per second. We want to know the mass, velocity, and momentum of the third piece. So here, uh, before, we have this one cannonball moving in one direction uh, at 50 meters per second. Uh, and this is 10 kilograms. After, uh, we have uh, a two and a half kilogram piece going off at 30 degrees. And it is moving at uh, 60 meters per second. We have a four and a half kilogram piece going off like this at 45 degrees. And minus 45 being below the x-axis at 75 meters per second. We want to know the th what's happening to the third piece. So the third piece, we don't know. So again, uh, sum the momentum uh, in the x direction initially must equal the sum of the momentum in the x direction uh, final. And likewise, uh, sum the momentums in the y initial must equal the sum of the momentums uh, in the y final. Well, one thing we can do relatively quickly, though, is what's the mass of the third piece? Because we have one mass uh, here that's 2.5 kilograms, and we have another mass that's 4.5 kilograms. So this mass is 4.5. So can we find the mass of that third piece? Well, the total mass is 10 kilograms, so let's find uh, mass 3. So uh, 10 kilograms must equal uh, 2.5 plus 4.5 plus 
M3. And we find that M3 uh, is uh, 3 kilograms. Okay, so there's our third mass. Now we just need to figure out, you know, what's its momentum and what is its uh, final velocity. So from there, uh, if we take and sum the momentums in the x direction, I'm going to come up here and do that up here. So if we take sum of the momentums uh, in the x direction, initial, must equal the sum of So again, we have 10 kilograms times 50 must equal uh, the momentum in the x direction of the 2.5 kilogram mass is going to be 2.5 kilograms times 60 meters per second times the x component is going to be the cosine of 30 degrees. And I'm going to list these below. Uh, next one is going to be uh, the 4.5 kilogram mass times its velocity of 75 meters per second times, again, its x component, which is going to be the cosine of 45. And then we have the third mass, which is 3 kilograms, times some velocity in the x direction. So if we solve this, uh, I get um, 500 is equal to 129.9 from that first line plus uh, 238.6 plus 3 times uh, Vx. And that Vx in terms of uh, the, the resulting velocity and its angle, uh, we can substitute this in for V cosine theta, where we don't know either V or cosine theta. So we have two unknowns in there. So we can uh, simplify this down, uh, and we end up with 43.3 is equal to V cosine theta. So we're going to hold on to that piece. Then we can go to summing the momentums uh, in the y direction initially must equal the sum of the momentums uh, in the y direction finally. I'm going to see if you can uh, solve that uh, and see if you can come up with a resulting velocity and submit that. So see if you can finish this example and submit both the p final and the velocity final, including uh, direction for both of those.